When it comes to nonlinear systems, having explicit solutions is somewhat of a rarity. It doesn't happen all that often, but it does sometimes work. Let's take a look at a continuous time example of a very famous population model, something called the logistic model. Now this is simple, but it is useful for our purposes. The model is this, dx dt equals r times x times quantity k minus x. Here, x as a function of time t is a population size, and r and k are positive constants. Roughly speaking, r is like a growth rate or a reproduction rate, and k is something called a capacity, sometimes a carrying capacity. We'll see why later. Now this model can be explicitly solved using the tools of calculus. Let's dig in and do it. Now, how does this work? We take our equation, dx dt equals rx times quantity k minus x. We're going to do separation of variables. That means we get all the x's to one side and all the t's to the other. Doing so gives us dx over x times quantity k minus x equals r times dt. Now, having separated, our next step is to integrate both sides of this equation. Let's start with the right. What's the integral of r dt? Well, that's easy. That's rt. Oh, plus a constant, plus c. Almost forgot that. On the left-hand side, how are we going to integrate dx over x times quantity k minus x? Let's do a partial fractions decomposition. I can split that up into dx over x plus dx over k minus x with a 1 over k out in front of all of that. And now what we can do is multiply that entire equation through by k. So on the right-hand side, I get rkt plus some other constant, c1. That's really k times our first constant, c. And then on the left, when I integrate dx over x, I get log of x. When I integrate dx over k minus x, I get minus log of k minus x. I can put them together using a quotient, and oh, I gotta do an absolute value in there, probably something like that. Okay, what are we gonna do with this solution now that we've integrated? I've got that log, and I need to isolate x. I need to get it by itself. So what we're gonna do is exponentiate both sides. The exponential and the log cancel and then on the right-hand side, we exponentiate all that stuff there. Now, I can multiply through by k minus x, and I get that x equals quantity k minus x times e to the rkt times e to the c1. We're going to call that a new constant, c2. Oh boy, I'm getting kind of tired here. We still have to solve for x, and guess what? That involves a bunch of algebra. But let's assume that someone has done that algebra for us and gives us, in the end, our solution. x of t is k times x naught divided by x naught plus quantity k minus x naught times e to the minus r k t, where here x naught is the initial condition, what you get when you plug in t equals zero. Now, this is great. This is the solution, but what does it really tell you about the system? Well, we could, we could try drawing some pictures. We could pick an initial condition x0, assume some explicit positive values for k, for r, look at the graph of that, see what happens. Maybe do it for a couple of different initial conditions. We see it's suggested by the figures that things seem to be converging to some value. So what do we do next? Well, we've got that explicit solution. We could try taking a limit as t goes to infinity of x of t. That is the limit of k x naught over x naught plus quantity k minus x naught times e to the minus r k t. Now, the only place there's a t in there is down in the denominator. If I send t to infinity, then what happens? Well, r and k are positive constants. That exponent is negative. That means that e to the minus r k t goes to zero. And we converge to a value of k x naught divided by x naught. 
the x naughts cancel, and we get a final answer of k. That verifies what we saw graphically, that solutions tend to this capacity, this carrying capacity, k. Now, that was a bit of work, and we did get some explicit results, and this is about the best that we can hope for. This is as good as it gets, and it's extremely rare, because in general, we're not going to be able to use calculus to do this. Let's take a really, really simple, general, nonlinear dynamical system, dx dt equals f of x. What are we going to do with that? Well, we could try doing the same thing, separate variables divide through by f of x, multiply through by dt, and I get dx over f of x equals dt. Okay, we've separated the variables. Now what? Now we integrate both sides. On the right, we have the integral of dt. I'll do that one. That's t plus a constant. You can do the integral on the left, okay? Is that fair? You can integrate dx over f of x. Well, you say, what's f of x? Well, I don't know. It could be anything. What if it's e to the minus x squared? What if it's cosine of x cubed? Are you going to be able to integrate that? No. Am I going to be able to integrate that? No. Even if you can, can you solve the resulting expression for x as a function of t? Probably not. Is this something that just goes wrong in continuous time? Nope. Discrete time dynamical systems can also be really difficult to handle. Consider the following simple game. Let's look at the recurrence relation xn plus 1 equals cosine of xn. So you pick your initial condition x0, and you, you take its cosine. You just, you just push the cosine button on the calculator, and then you just keep doing it. Boom, 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 boom. You can write out what the explicit solution is. xn is cosine of cosine of cosine of cosine of cosine, keep going, of cosine of x0. And there you go, that's it, that's your solution. But this is a fail, because what are you going to do with it for various values of x0? What does that equal? I guess you could plug it into a calculator and figure it out. But having an explicit solution is only as helpful as what you can infer from it. And in most cases, the answer is not much. So what are we going to do? Are we going to give up? Is it time? Well, we are going to abandon hope of explicit solutions. And instead of searching for exact quantitative solutions, we're going to focus on qualitative methods. And this is eventually going to be even more informative.